AS into level 2. Liquid penetrant testing level 2. Specific examination. Note, note down your answers in notebook and verify with my answers at the end of video. Liquid penetrant testing, also known as penetrant testing or dye penetrant inspection, is a widely used non-destructive testing method for detecting surface breaking defects in various materials. It involves applying a visible or fluorescent dye to the surface of a component, which then penetrates into any discontinuities through capillary action. In this guide, we will explore the responsibilities and training requirements for individuals certified to penetrant level 2, as well as the examination process and certification options. To become certified as a penetrant level 2 technician, comprehensive training is required. Lavender International offers penetrant level 2 training courses that cover both general and specific theory related to the method. Question point 1. The most likely result of a too short dwell time of an emulsifier is, a tendency to remove the penetrant from fine discontinuities. Incomplete removal of excess surface penetrant. An overactive emulsifier. All of the above. Question point 2. Diffusion of a lipophilic emulsifier penetrant into the test piece surface is stopped by, the conclusion of the emulsifier dwell time. The penetrant. Application of developer. The water rinse step. Question point three. When using a post-emulsifiable penetrant process, it is important to drain as much excess penetrant as possible from the surface of a test piece which has been immersed in the penetrant because, too much penetrant on the part surface may lead to more rapid penetration and oversensitivity. A thinner layer of penetrant is likely to have higher capillary action and, thus, be more sensitive to fine discontinuities. A thinner layer of penetrant will result in less penetrant contamination in the emulsifier tank none of the above. Question point 5. When a drained well technique is used during emulsification, what two mechanisms are responsible for combining the emulsifier and penetrant? Diffusion and turbulent mixing osmosis and agitation turbulent mixing and osmosis agitation and turbulent mixing. Question point 5. When performing a post-emulsifiable penetrant test, the test piece does not rinse acceptable clean during normal processing. What should be done? Return the test piece to the emulsifier and repeat the step. Increase water temperature and pressure. Remove the excess penetrant with solvent remover and process the remainder of the test normally. Clean the test piece and reprocess through the complete penetrant test process. Question point 6. The adequacy of excess penetrant removal, using water washable penetrant process, is judged and controlled by water rinse time. Fluorescent brightness measurement. Visual observation. Cleanliness of cloths used for removal. Question point 7. Another name for a self-emulsifying penetrant process is, solvent removable. Water washable. Post-emulsifiable. Solvent emulsifiable. Question point 8. Which of the following is a function of an emulsifier? To draw penetrant out of a discontinuity and form a visible indication. To increase the size of an indication through capillary action. To provide contrasting background for viewing penetrant indications. None of the above. Question point 9. When viewed under black light, developer appears, yellow-green. Blue-black. White. Pinkish-white. Question point 10. Penetrant developers are used in which of the following forms? Water washable. Water suspendable. Solvent suspendable. All of the above. Question point 11. Which of the following developers requires the test piece to be dried prior to its application? Water washable. Water suspendable. Non-aqueous suspendable. All of the above. Question point 12. 
an effect of a thick developer coding might be, to obscure discontinuity indications. To enhance discontinuity indications. To increase penetrant test sensitivity by providing more capillary paths. None of the above. Question point 13. Why is it important to view the test piece shortly after developer application and periodically through the development time? To make sure the developer dries evenly. To guard against pooling of developer in low areas. To avoid missing small flaw indications adjacent to areas of high bleed out. To avoid missing transient indications against an otherwise clean background. Question point 14. Which of the following is an advantage of a dry developer? Ease of handling. Non-corrosive. No hazardous vapors. All of the above. Question point 15. Why is the need for a dry surface prior to developer application more of a disadvantage with a dry developer than with a non-aqueous wet developer? Because the dry developer only forms a thin film on the surface of the test piece. Because the solvent in a non-aqueous wet developer penetrates deeper into discontinuities to contact entrapped penetrant and draw it back out. Because the warm test piece causes evaporation of the solvent in the non-aqueous developer. All of the above. Question point 16. The preferred method of application of aqueous wet developer is, dipping. Spraying. Brushing. All of the above. Question point 17. It is easier to control developer coating thickness with a soluble developer than a water suspendable one because, less developer can be dissolved that suspended in water. It dries more rapidly on the test piece. Evaporation deposits a thin, even coating on the test piece. All of the above. Question point 18. Which of the following is not an advantage of an aqueous wet developer? It may be applied to a dry surface. It has no hazardous vapors. There is visible evidence of developer coverage. During drying, only water evaporates, not costly solvents. Question point 19. A disadvantage of water-soluble developers is, agitation of the developer is not required. A uniform developer film is obtained. The dried developer is difficult to remove during post-cleaning. None of the above. Question point 20. Fluorescent penetrant indications are more visible than color contrast penetrant indications because, they reflect more light. They emit rather than reflect light. They contain a higher concentration of dye particles. Yellow and green contrast more than red and white. Question point 21. The tendency of a liquid to be drawn into small discontinuities is called, viscosity. Barometric. Capillary action. Surface tension. Question point 22. A liquid which reacts with a penetrant to render it water washable is called, developer. Emulsifier. Aqueous scrubber. Non-aqueous cleaner. Question point 23. A water tolerance test would be performed on, solvent removable penetrants. Water washable and post emulsifiable penetrant. Solvent removable penetrants and hydrophilic emulsifiers. Water washable penetrants and lipophilic emulsifiers. Question point 24. A problem which could be caused by a penetrant with abnormally high water content is, hydrogen assisted cracking. Rusting of steel parts. Water contamination. Blurring of indications. Question point 25. Deterioration of penetrant material performance may be caused by which of the following? Water contamination. Heat. Cleaning solvents. All of the above. Question point 26. When adding water to a penetrant, the water tolerance limit is indicated when, opacity reaches 2% of international optical transmission standard. 
the penetrant material and die separate into their constituent parts. Permanent cloudiness occurs. None of the above. Question point 27. Possible degradation of penetrant materials performance is often checked by performing penetrant testing of comparator blocks using samples of new and used penetrant materials. Water tolerance test. Using a penetrant test penetrometer. Judgment of a qualified inspector during production testing. Question point 28. The most common biological effect of penetrant materials on personnel is burns to the retina of the eye from overexposure to ultraviolet light. Skin irritation caused by removal of natural oils from the skin. Acute chlorine poisoning. No effect. Question point 29. Hydrophilic emulsifiers may be applied by dipping, immersion, spraying, all of the above. Question point 30. The term drag out losses refers to loss of penetrant materials that are carried from one processing station to another on the test piece. Penetrant which is removed from discontinuities during the water washable process. Penetrant which is removed from discontinuities because of over emulsification prior to water removal. Both B and C. Question point 31. The diffusion mechanism is used in the operation of solvent removable penetrant. Lipophilic emulsifiers. Hydrophilic emulsifiers. Both B and C. Question point 32. The concentration of a hydrophilic emulsifier may be measured by specific gravity, fluorescent brightness, an optical refraction meter, a comparator block. Question point 33. When applied by immersion, an optimum concentration for a hydrophilic emulsifier is about 0.5 to 2%, 80 to 100%. 2.5 to 20 percent 50 to 80 percent question point 34 hydrophilic emulsifier contact time depends on which of the following surface finish of test piece emulsifier concentration method of application all of the above question point 35 how is the correct emulsifier contact time determined Manufacturer's recommendations. One half penetrant dwell time. Experiment. Same as penetrant dwell time. Question point 36. Which of the following is used in connection with hydrophilic emulsifier applied by immersion? Brushing. Agitation. Drained well. All of the above. Question point 37. Which of the following is a disadvantage of a hydrophilic emulsifier? Greater penetrant tolerance than lipophilic emulsifiers. Economical. Low drag out losses compared to lipophilic emulsifiers. Versatile application. Question point 38. During excess penetrant removal, a water spray prearance might be used with a lipophilic emulsifier. A hydrophilic emulsifier. A hydrophobic emulsifier. None of the above. Question point 39. Recycling of penetrant and rinse water is facilitated with which of the following emulsifier types? Hydrophobic. Hydrophilic. Lipophilic. Hygroscopic. Question point 40. Which type of emulsifier is intended for use without dilution? Hydrophobic. Hydrophilic. Lipophilic. Hygroscopic. Question point 41. Halogen content of penetrant materials is limited because of the possibility of stress corrosion cracking in which of the following materials? High tensile steel. Austenitic stainless steel. Titanium alloys. All of the above. Question point 42. The most likely cause of loss of performance in a lipophilic emulsifier is high viscosity. 
water contamination, phase separation, improper concentration. Question point 43. In performing a water content test of a lipophilic emulsifier per ASDM D95, what solvent is used? Naphtha. Trichloroethane. Benzene. Xylene. Question point 44. Which of the following developers would you expect to be the least sensitive? Water suspendable wet. Water suspendable wet. Dry immersion. Non-aqueous wet. Question point 45. Which of the following developers would you expect to be the most sensitive? Water suspendable wet. Water suspendable wet. Dry immersion. Non-aqueous wet. Question point 46. Which of the following developers would you expect to be the least sensitive? Water suspendable wet. Water suspendable wet. Water soluble. Water soluble. Question point 47. Which of the following developers would you expect to be the most sensitive? Water suspendable wet. Water suspendable wet. Water soluble. Water soluble. Question point 48. Dual purpose penetrants are viewed under what type of light? White light. Black light. Both A and B. None of the above. Question point 49. When is it possible to detect slightly subsurface defects using penetrant testing? Only if you are using fluorescent penetrant. When using post-emulsifiable penetrant. It is not possible to detect slightly subsurface defects using penetrant testing. When using dual sensitivity penetrants. Question point 50. Which of the following would be classed as an in-service fault? A shrinkage crack. A fatigue crack. A grinding crack. All could be in-service faults. Please check all your answers. Thank you for watching. Keep supporting. Thank you for watching.